Hello my beautiful, wonderful people, I'm Ash and welcome back to another monthly Seraph of the End review. Ooh. Now, uh, for some reason my mic today is going off the deep end, so this might be a little hard to fix in the audio, but we live and we learn, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but uh, we'll, just, we'll just ignore that. I, I talk very loudly, so I quite often have to um, set my mic to a quite a lower level so that I don't blow people's ears off, but uh, that might remain to be seen. But anyway, let's get into this month's chapter, uh, chapter 120, The Price of Appetite, which, not gonna lie, when I first read this chapter, I thought it said The Prince of Appetite, and I was very confused. I was like, The Prince of Appetite, what, what are we talking about? What's going on? But uh, this title, it makes a lot more sense for the chapter, but very, like, literal title, I think, but yeah, I don't know why I just completely misread it. It was just, it's fine, whatever, you know? <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. So you just, just chilling, you know, just chilling once again in just another department store. I love that. Like, what is that? Is that like a, I, I assume it's a shelf that's fallen down. Like from the top, you can tell it's a shelf. But from here, it looked like a fridge, like a freezer. Sorry, like, like a Japanese, it's like a freezer. You know, that's just like, there's no shelf above it and then you just slide the doors to like open it. I don't know if I'm explaining that well, but like my local supermarket has all of its freezers that look like that. Anyway, um, but obviously it's not a freezer if he's getting canned tuna out of it or canned, canned whatever. Uh, there is no label. It's just vague shapes of kanji on there <laughs> or a vague shape of a part of Japan. Which they do that a lot with like milk and stuff too, because a lot of milk products come from Hokkaido. So Hokkaido, the, sh the shape of Hokkaido will just be on every product that's like Hokkaido milk. It's like milk from Hokkaido and then there's just a picture of Hokkaido. Anyway, um, fun fact. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's uh, absolutely going to eat that. So mm, that's great. Oh, look at Mika in this panel. This is so nice. Like he just looks so poised and like nice. I just like that he's like, hmm, hmm, same. It's like, you know, like when you're like super deep in thought, when you're like, eventually you just go, hmm, out loud, because you're like, you're thinking very strongly. I like that. Our boy's doing his job. He's he's coming through for us. He's so precious. Like, look at him. Oh, serious face. I love that. He's so nice. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, wow. There was a can left. Mika, shouldn't you also be telling him, like, you're smart, you're a smart boy, you're a very, very smart cookie. Don't you think you should probably be telling him, hmm, that can is at least four years old. Maybe you should not eat it. Uh, unless it's like a super can. Like, I guess you can get canned products that last for five to ten years, but those are usually very specifically made for, like, long voyages and stuff Um, in, like, olden day stuff like obviously we don't go on five to ten year voyages <laughs> these days but uh most canned stuff expires in like two to three years uh like if three years is quite a lot it's usually like two or like one like canned food we know like i know we think canned food lasts for ages but it's like it's not that long like there's like that one scene in Jojo's Part Six where like the the world's the time of the world's progressing really fast and everyone's like oh we've got to buy canned goods or we're all gonna starve because our food's rotting before we can eat it like the bread rots immediately but then like when they open the canned food it's like a couple of seconds later when the time's speeding up even more the canned food's gone too it's like it's not that long like, I feel like the over I'm getting really distracted about this canned food. I don't know, I used to work in a supermarket, so, like, I I was very acutely aware of how long things lasted on the shelf, because, like, I stared at products all day. It was kind of my job to know things like this, because everyone thinks you're an expert in every food product imaginable when you work in a supermarket. Like, people would ask me the difference between, like, this brand of flour and this brand of flour, and, like, suddenly I somehow need to be a flour expert, as well as an expert on how to craft everything to do with baking, because I need to know, like, like, people don't realize the difference between, like, corn flour or, like, corn starch, and, like, I have to explain it, especially, like, foreigners, because it's the same thing in Australia. Heads up, if you ever want to get corn starch, you, you, every Australian supermarket is going to sell corn flour instead. Thanks to all of the foreigners that would get angry at me when I told them this. That is how it is in Australia. Anyway, I'm very passionate about the corn flour debate. 
And let's get back to the chapter. But oh, look, he's got his um. I almost exited out of the app. That would have been tr- atrocious. He's got his little little spiral tail. Oh god, I just I wonder if Yamamoto just has a lot of fun during Mika. Also, look at his face. He's oh, they're so cute. Ah. Oh my god, I just like surely Yamamoto must have some fun during Mika. Like, come on, man. I'm not alone, right? Big meow meow. He's very fun. It smells good. It's still edible. Uh, we'll just... Okay, you know what? It's fine. Look, I'm, I'm sure there's a chance that it's still edible. Like, not everything expires in three years, Max. Like I said, there could be things that last that long. But <laughs> I won't get into it. It's very boring talk. <laughs> um, I'm fine eating your desires. I like the way he offered. Like, bro, you know he's a demon. He's not solid. He can't eat things. But that's so cute. Also, technically, if he's eating Yu's desires and Yu's biggest desire right now is to eat, isn't he also technically eating the tuna or the, or the can as well? Sorry, I see a can, I see a round can and I just think tuna. Uh, anyway, oops, that was my tablet pen I knocked. I love the way he's like, whatever he's eating, he literally just like slurped it up. Like, I, <laughs> I really want it to be t- canned tuna, and that he's just drained it and then slurped it up. <laughs> like, he's like, you know, like, <laughs> this is my head cannon, and I love it. Look at the way Mika's sitting there. Ah, he's so cute. God, I want that screen turn so bad on his, on his cloak. <laughs> you wouldn't steal a screen turn, I absolutely would. Are you really dumping this whole thing on me? Oh, <laughs> you, help me think. I love the way he's, like, nagging. Nagging wife Mika back in action. But he's hes not wrong. Two heads are better than one, as the saying goes. Better get a firm grasp on the situation. Yeah, he's not a, not a bad point, you know. I love how he's perched here. Look, he's perched like a meow meow. <laughs> so you being able to remember things from before he's born. Interesting. So he remembers some of the times from, yeah, he, seeing Mika's corpse and, like, the whole... Uh, maybe if I kiss him, he'll wake up, like stuff like that. Um, which Mika semi, I'm assuming semi remembers due to his, uh, involvement going through Yu's mind slash memories when he, like, touched the eye and then, like, all of that shit happened. Anyway, it was really pretty. <laughs> was that you? Ooh, woo. You know, no- knocking his fingers together. Was that you? Mmm. <laughs> I love the way Mika is just so much like, mmm, I don't know. I don't know. Bitch, I don't know shit. <laughs> Yu's just like, hmm, could it, should it, would it? I really do hope they go through, like, a memory trip. I think that would be, like, really cool. Like, um, like, they loosely explored it when they were fighting, when he was fighting small demon Mika, and they were going through each other's memories and stuff. But, like, I really want them to explore the memories in more detail. I think it would just be, like, a really good chance to, like, clear up. So that, like, because we have seen flashbacks, so we, the reader, we know things already that clearly you and Mika don't, so I think it would be good for us to learn some things, oops, sorry, learn some things, like, not, like, they need to be on the same level as us, that's what I meant to say, they need to be on the same level as us in the story of knowledge that we have and they have, so that they can act, because right now we know more than they do, and I think it's important that you and Mika's knowledge really, like, basically upgrades immediately right now so that they can perform better in whatever Kogami's next story plot point thing is. Mm. The further back I go, the more your desires I have to devour. Mm. Interesting. Well, go ahead and eat more then. <laughs> God, you, you, what you have now is not enough, you. God, do better. <laughs> He's so surprised. And also, those, that shoulder width. Damn, boy. <laughs> You need to let your powers run way more berserk. Hmm, interesting way of phrasing it. He hop, he tip, he tippity tap with his foot. <laughs> Should I think lewd thoughts or something? <laughs> I mean, technically, desire is historically a word that is often associated with lust. So, you know, I'll give you that. Look at you, he's so well read. He knows everything. My god. <laughs> Mika's just like, mmm. <laughs> I, lo- I love this stare. Like, mmm. And you's just like, like he's got like sunflowers radiating off of him. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Mika, what do you need? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. 
burning twice the desire. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because he's also doing like whatever Ashimaru, it, wherever he is now, it's like you is still dealing with it. Like, I guess he still has to feed Ashimaru so he can use Ashimaru. That makes sense. Anyway. I'm starving. <laughs> Look at the, that picture at the top. He is so precious. Looks like we've got two things to do. Oh, yes. We love a good list maker. List him, King. Look through old memories. Yeah. But didn't he also, when he was going through used memories before, didn't he also run into Mahiru and, like, it, like, freaked him out? Slash also freaked me out because why the fuck was she in his memories or could access them? So, like, if they if they succeed in starting to go through their memories, can Mahiru find them again? So can she find them while Gurun's fighting them in the real world or something? Or, like, Gurun and you are fighting, but Mika and Mahiru are fighting in the dream world? Or the dream world, you know what, the memory world or whatever. Like, that could be an interesting dynamic, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, get the hell out of Tokyo. Yeah, fuck Tokyo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please be nice. <laughs> Me, me me saying that, like, Tokyo is an omnipresent um, creature. Like, please be nice to me. <laughs> please be nice. So, so casually, should we attack a town then? Their food stores. <laughs> just, just this gremlin racing towards their food, shoving bread into his mouth. Classic. The biggest towns nearby are Ikebukuro, Shibuya, and Shinjuku. Right, so yeah, they Shibuya is where they used to live. Oh, sorry, where you used to live, right? Because I used to live inside the, the very safe walls of Shibuya. It's the biggest city. Uh, Shinjuku is not that far away from Shibuya. On, Like, in real life, I mean. <laughs> Shinjuku and Shibuya are very close. Um, Ikebukuro is quite a distance away. Like, it's not super far. You can get to it pretty easily from Shibuya. Um, so, I feel like these are all quite... These are all, like, in, like, a, a bam, bam, bam format. So, like... It's like Shibuya, and like Ikebukuro, Shibuya, Shinjuku, like bam, bam, bam. They're all pretty easy distance. But I suppose the disadvantage there in this world is that it's quite easy to send aid from one to the other. Like that's what they did in the first season, right? Well, the first season slash the early manga chapters, they like sent aid from Shibuya to Shinjuku because Shinjuku was under attack. And they were trying to like stop Shinjuku from falling. And then that's when they had their gay ass reunion. Anyway, um... <laughs> All right, we need to move fast. Gurun is smart. Give him time and he'll anticipate us coming. Exit stage left. Enter stage right. <laughs> we go after them. Oh, I love that. He'll need a ton of energy to maintain both. Speaking from experience there, are you, Gurun? Actually, you know, now that I think about it, if Gurun was tech... Okay, wait. Okay. Okay, wait, hang on. Let's, let's think about this. So Gurren had two demons in him for a very long time, Noya and Mahiru. But Mahiru was the sword and Noya wasn't, because Noya has a different sword, technically. But Noya, like, when he was getting absorbed by Mahiru at the end of uh, Cat at 16, like, he, like, said that he had, like, no control over it. And then, like, he was, like, absorbed. So uh, Gurren couldn't hear his voice again, I assume. So does that mean he had one weapon because the... The demons were absorbed together, in which case can Mika do that with Ashimaru? Or is it a separate case here? Because whatever the hell Mahiru did to absorb Noya still has not been explained. <laughs> it's fine, I guess we don't need an explanation, but I mean, if you didn't read Catastrophe at 16, then Noya's sudden appearance in the Vampire Rain manga would be very strange. Like, I read C Catastrophe at 16 after getting up to date in the manga. I found Noya really weird that he randomly showed up. Like, that was a really weird detail to me. But, like, it makes sense if you read the night novels. But, like, I don't know. It's it's a strange situation to be in because it's good to have supporting material, but you should never rely on supporting material to tell your main story. So, like, a small detail, like, I suppose Noya's gone now, so it doesn't really matter, but he is related to the past, so I think it's important. Like, you have to be careful when you're bringing in characters and, like, um story threads from a separate piece of media in your same world because you the story still needs to be able to stand on its own so something that was crucial to know in cat at 16 can't like not be explained in vampire rain the manga so the manga has to re-explain things from cat at 16 because you can't assume everyone has read your light novels i guess it's a manga series now but like you can't assume people have read the supporting material because 
you it has to stand alone, especially a shonen. Like, that's just kind of like the rule of the thing, right? Most shonen don't get, like, outside material made about them, usually in this aspect. Like, sure, you'll have, like, if you have an anime, you have, like, drama CDs and, like, maybe a few little com- funny comics and shit like that. But, like, you don't often have, like, an entire other series of, like, like night novels like Seraph has. It's, it's very strange in that case. But I am, once again, <laughs> I'm kind of rambling, but I don't know. I just wanted to talk about that. Anyway, let's move on. They are discussing where to go. Yes, so Shibuya is well too, too well defended. It absolutely. It has a huge, gigantic fucking wall around it. And uh, Shinjuku's wall got crushed when Lacus and Rene, like, <laughs> shot the plane into it. Uh, did the oops reference. Okay, um, so... Yeah, so Shinjuku is a bit easier than Shibuya, so probably not Shibuya, but Shibuya is still possible. He may not, he may pick it knowing we'd dismiss it. I kind of like the way Kamizuki thinks here. I think this is a really nice addition to this chapter, actually. Probably my favorite thing about this chapter, in a really weird way, is how Kamizuki thinks, because he thinks a lot differently to, obviously, how, like, uh, Shinoa, Mitsubo, and, like, everyone else, like, like, I think... Kumizuki was onto something. Like he has a very interesting way of thinking, and I think that really shines through in some things he does. And it's kind of sad that we don't really see as much of the gang thinking together. Kind of like this. Like this is a really nice moment, and I wish we had kind of more of this because Kumizuki has always been like the head butter, I guess you could say. Like he's not, he's not as under. <laughs> I want to say he's not as understanding, but he's very logical in how he thinks. So like sh- him just saying, "Yeah, no, should be is still possible," because. We're thinking this, so you might think that as well, and then attack sort of thing. And I feel like Kamizuki pointing that out makes sense, whereas the other ones might not, because Yoichi is more emotion-based in how he does things. Uh, like, yeah, like, literally, he's, like, saying here, Yoichi's like, oh, yeah, but you can't do that, right? Because there's there's guards, but... And then Mitsuba's like, no, you wouldn't go that far. But Kamizuki's already thought about it, and he's already been like, no, you would, based on how I've assessed his character already, which... You know, Kamizuki's a bit smarter than the rest of them. I wish they'd put that to more use, you know, like, ah, make him talk more. Anyway, <laughs> he's broken, he devoured my brother. I mean, poor Cruel, man. <laughs> minute, minute of silence for Cruel. Oh, she's been through it. Who cares? I certainly don't. Saying or saying it doesn't matter to me. God, there's so many conflicting opinions in this group. Like, how is this group managing to form and stay coherent at this moment? That's my main question. <laughs> Whatever the case, I will get your ritual back, even if I have to kill Mikaela to do it. Mmm, very dramatic. Ooh, look at the shading on her shoe there. That's so interesting. I mean, I get so distracted with the art. Right, yeah, so this is like a really interesting counterpoint, and definitely like something that the fandoms discuss so far. Like, obviously there's people who are just obviously hating on Shinoa, because people do be like that when they read surface level. But, um, I think there's an interesting case to be made here about... Shinoa, like, having, like, I want to say, like, a villain arc, because we were talking about a corruption arc for you, uh, when he was going through the fight with Ashomaru, and him being like, yeah, fuck the world, I only care about Mika, and him realizing that he literally thinks that, like, he literally could say, fuck the world, I only want Mika, but I think it's interesting how Shinoa is dealing with her fuck the world sort of thoughts, because, like, she's also, like, a, yeah, I don't really care about everyone, I only care about some people, and you's obviously near the top of the list, and, like, her sister, like, she wants to know more about her sister, and she hasn't really been allowed to feel emotions, I guess, because of her backstory and everything. Like, uh, I guess you get a little bit of, of it from that, I think it was, like, chapter 70, no, 90 something, 97, chapter 97, how did I remember that? Um, the chapter where, it, like, tells her about it shows about her past um, with Mahiru and how they retreat, uh, how they were treated um, to basically not show emotions because that's going to bring out uh, Shikama the most. Uh, but that could be interesting. And also Shikama could totally use her for this. Like there's no mention that Shikama doesn't still have access to Shinoa's, I, I guess, body. <laughs> like he might still be able to do that. I know he noped out before because he was not into it, and he did his whole, nope, I don't want anything to do with this, and pissed off. But I think if he got his strength back from whatever he's doing with his ungrateful children, um, then there could be a case to be made that he could come back. Like, the door could still be open for him to get into Shinoa's mind. Or Shinoa could just go on a full villain arc, you know? Anyway, let's move on. Let's go to Ikebukuru. Me every weekend. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, but seriously, me every weekend. Um, oh, this is such a nice panel of Mika. Ah, oh, look at the way his hair falls over his face. Like, oh, that's so nice. The little fangs. Art appreciation moment. It's great. Ah, oh, this is so good. Hit multiple smaller civilians. Ah, I mean, it's great to think too, because Yu's not the only one thinking here. There's also Mika. His thoughts are... Uh, like, they're sharing thoughts here, so it's not just what you wants to do, it's what you and Mika are doing, too. If we take theirs, they'll starve. Like, you- ah, oh, you, you're so nice. Like, I know- I know you're like a, oh, fuck everything, I want a corruption arc, but you're also, like, at his- at the heart, at his, like, core, you is a kind and caring person, and I don't think he could ever shake that. To an extent. Want to quit then? I'm okay with that. <laughs> Go back to Gurren and the others. I love the way Mika's just like, well, we could hit people and their supplies and then use like, but won't they starve? And Mika's like, oh my god, they will you. You're right. They will starve. We shouldn't do it because they'll starve. Let's just go back and kill me. <laughs> like, Mika, please. You're making this so obvious. <laughs> Oh, if they starve, I'll just remind them, revive them later. Ah, oh, man, this moment, I remember when, when I first read this, I was just thinking, th this is such a villain thing to say. This is, like, such an unhinged thing to say. Like, once you start thinking of people as, like, a commodity like that, like, oh, it's okay because I'm bringing everyone back anyway, so it doesn't matter how many people die now because later I'll just revive you all. So your life, it basically means their life is meaningless or that they become pawns in a way. So it's kind of interesting that if you start thinking more this way, he's basically becoming more of how Shikama thinks because Shikama thinks everyone is a pawn and is meaningless because they're all just pieces to bring his son back. And like, he's proved that with how he treated Saito. And now he's getting his just desserts and how he treated Saito. But mm, I think it's very... Oh, and Erd too, because I guess Erd double-crossed him in the end. But yeah, sorry, but you're coming too. He doesn't have a choice. He's literally linked to you, like, like your soul, man. <laughs> That's so funny. But ah. Uh... Anyway, it's, it's so interesting. And if we fail, then you'll have effectively murdered them. Yeah, so like, M Mika knows what's going on. Mika's like, mm, I, know th I know this shit. But it's a valid point. Like, I think you understands it. But I think he's still willing to, like, don that role sort of thing. Like, he's okay with it because... Or maybe he... Or maybe he's just pretending to be okay with it. I guess we just don't really know yet because he's only just started doing this kind of stuff over the last few chapters. But we'll see. <laughs> I'm already a demon. Ah. They're so cute. Look at them looking at each other. Oh shit. They're going to Ikebukura. Oh shit. I love that. I love that. They're already there. <laughs> Can we just appreciate this picture of Kamizuki just with his glasses? <laughs> why Why does he look like a creature from X-Files? <laughs> I get the X-Files music in the background for that one. Oh god. There's been an attack and, she, and Shinoa's like, oh, yep, got it. I'm right. I'm amazing. Amazing. It's farthest from Shibuya. I mean, technically, if you think about it on the map, Ikebukuro is... I guess the easiest way to escape, like you don't have to go anywhere near Shibuya and that's the most heavily guarded area. So I guess if you ransacked Ikebukuro, ran west, would you run west? I think you'd probably run west because the vampires are out there, like Kyoto's out there. So maybe he'd want to go to Kyoto or would he want to go to Tohoku in the north? So if you run east, northeast from Tokyo, you go up to the snow area and, and like, Hokkaido. Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine if he went up there. Oh my god. It's the Golden Kamui. Um, a Wari no Seraf crossover I've always wanted in my heart and soul. My gosh. Anyway. <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> oh, is it, this is, like, the most fucked up thing where she's like, yeah, um, tell them to burn their food. Like, Burn their fruit, you know, well, that's the most fucked up thing you've ever said. You've said some fucked up shit, but everyone says some fucked up shit because it's Seraph and everyone's a little fucked up. So, you know, it's understandable. But this, this right here, that's a fucked up thing to say because all you was doing was wanting, all he wants to do is steal food so that he can eat it and consume it. Like, it's like a prey predator thing, right? It's like a, I eat you because I need your sustenance to survive. It's like, it's an understandable evil. I'm not saying it's good, but I'm saying it's an understandable evil. 
Like, I'm stealing from you because I need to eat too. But he, they're not they're not eating this. She wants to burn it so that he can't get it. And that's really fucked because then you're putting two different parties at starving status. And, like, I know that they're trying to corner you and then this is a way to get him to not be able to move so that they can capture him. But, oh, my God. I'm sorry. That's a red flag, girlfriend. I'm sorry. That's a red flag. Anyway. Oh, look at these cute... Oh, my God. Look at these cute little kids. Those are, those eyebrows are giving me massive Komono Jihen vibes. And I love it. 10 out of 10. Sounds like an army jeep. <laughs> I just want... I just want that really bad, really stereotypical horn sound effect that, like, every American media uses uh, to be playing right now with, like, they're, like, driving forward. In my heart, that's what's going on. Mika, take the wheel. <laughs> just leave enough room for Jesus. <laughs> he just jumped- he just jumped on top of the, um, the windscreen. Oh my god, you. That's- that's pretty cool. Honestly, this would be so scary, though. Like, this guy- I, I mean, he's wearing the Demon Army uniform still, too, so wow. Way to fuck with the kids, you. Oh, that's a nice panel at the top with his sword. Very nice. Did he just, like, smack the air? Like, he just went- Bajum! I love the vague outline of kanji on this box. <laughs> like, you can tell it's kanji. But it's like- they're just like, don't write anything down. <laughs> just the vague outline. <laughs> it's great. Oh my god. We're taking your food, resist and I kill you. Ah, uh, yeah, he's doing the old, uh, make him, make him get scared. We <laughs> even twitch and I'll kill the kid. He just, he just, he just picked this kid up like he's a crane game machine. He just picked it up. Oh my god. Damn. I guess technically if Mika didn't want to kill anyone or if Mika couldn't go through with it, could he? Like, he, he could just unmanifest his sword, I suppose, in a way. Anyway. Um, but obviously they have the same idea. Okay, I just, <laughs> I just love this. Wee, look at his tail. He's just sitting there. Like, imagine being one of those kids and you're like, your food supply for like the next week is in your hands. And then you go over to this, this beautiful blonde babe and he's got like cat ears and a cat tail. And you're like, you've like probably never seen a demon before if you're one of these children. And you're just like, what the fuck? Like, like I'm sure there'd be like one kid there that might be like, oh, kitty. <laughs> That'd be so cute. Anyway, oh weird, cute weird. Anyway, okay, I love this kid that's just like smacked you. It's like yeah, yeah. Basically, little you. You take a food, we're gonna die anyway. Yeah, that's such a you thing to say. You would have said that as a kid, absolutely. Oh, I love this where he's like, that's the spirit. <laughs> he like he like pushes him down. He's like, smack, and then he's like, that's the spirit. Don't stop, kid. The world's crap. <laughs> oh god. I love it. Ah, they're loading the food, but you should honestly be chowing down on something while he's waiting. Just to keep Mika refreshed, you know. Damn already. <laughs> nope, already caught up. <laughs> he's zooming. He's zooming. <laughs> Oh, I love it when he says the slice it open me kite lot. Oh, beautiful, delicious. 10 out of 10, wish it was animated. Oh, and Gecko into, ah, man. I wonder how they feel because like, it's kind of interesting to, th I wonder what the demons think because we haven't really seen them other than Ashimaru since they attacked little demon Mika when he was first born as a demon. So like, I wonder how like Gecko and Kasekiyo think uh, because all these other demons that, we're working under the first orders. I'm assuming they're still. So, like, they could just turn on everyone at any point, right? Uh, except for Gecko in, because, like, he, I'm sorry, he's not gonna beat Yoichi. We've seen how badass Yoichi is. I just don't think Gecko in has the strength to resist. <laughs> everyone else is like, yeah, we're overthrowing our humans now. And then Gecko in's like, oh, you guys go ahead. I'll be there soon, you know? And then they're like, Gecko in, you're like a massive buff dude. What do you mean? And then he's like, I, I just, uh, and then he like turns around and then Yoichi's just like, get going, sweetie, where are you going? In my, in my heart of hearts. <laughs> anyway, fighting. Oh, oh, he's got elf fangs and horns. Let's go. But he didn't dual wield. I want him to dual wield so bad. Dual wielding is so sexy. And I just want you to have Ashimaru in one hand and Mika in the other. And I just want him to go with that exact sound effect. Uh. Shonen Jump, that one's free. You can have that one. <laughs> Ooh, this one's wild the way Grin just uses the kid and then you immediately stops, like, 
So you are still sane. Mmm, debatable. Oh, and Kamizuki and Mitsuba just smacking him on either side. Damn. I love <laughs> I love the way Mika's grabbed you here. Like, oh god, oh god, my moron's out there, I gotta go get him. Oh, this is so good, oh. So I guess this means that she can't access her scythe anymore, right? Like, she you know, basically can't do anything because she doesn't have a demon weapon anymore. So I guess Shikama is the scythe and he's taken his scythe powers away from her, so maybe, oops, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, she hasn't done much else. Can't kill children without food, you can't leave Tokyo. <laughs> Gurren's like mustache twirling villain over here, like, mm, yes, you can't do anything, ew, all according to my Keikaku. Damn. <laughs> He's so hungry. Mika, feed him a design. <laughs> I know that's not how it works, but babe, give him something. I love the way in the middle of all of this, he's still just like, see, you can't do anything. Oh, come back with us. Oh, he's not going to. I'm sorry, but after everything you've seen here, do you really think he would just like roll over and do it? Like that's Yuichiro Hyakuya you're talking about. I don't think so. Oh, I really love this. And like, she like catches them out and then it's like, oh no, it's the the illusion trap magic. I think this is the the one that, um, what's her name? Sayuri usually uses. Isn't Sayuri very much into the paper craft ma um, spells and shit, if I remember correctly? It's one of Gurren's teams. No, yeah, it is Sayuri. I'm right, I promise you. <laughs> well, it's just an illusion. Yeah, you guys are dumb. Oh, they got you so good. I just, I just wish that there was another thing on the, the ground that just said fooled you and had like a little smiley face with its tongue sticking out and everything. Like, oh, please. <laughs> so they're in another part of Ikebukuro. Ooh. Very nice. I love this. Shum. Whoa, okay. What is this like vague angelic imagery? Like in the sky, lots of lightning and everything. Like, come on, man. I like that. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, I guess he was trying to- Oh, he had to maintain the illusion as well as doing shit here. I, just, I love the way Mika's driving this and it's just great! Like, like, get in, loser, we're going! <laughs> like, you falls in the back. Oh, man. Is he, he's eating. He's chomping away at some bread. This is so good. I'm full. We hack it's your desire. That's so cute. If they do, just kill them. Oh... There's no turning back now. I had to kill over 20 soldiers to get this food. Damn. Yeah, you guys are fully committed now. Like, th there's no point. There's no. You're past the point of return. Like, he's right. There's no turning back now. Like, you guys have kind of committed. You better do it, you know? Yeah, sorry. Oh, that's so cute. Even now, you're still just like, oh, go and come after us and I'll kill you. I just, <laughs> I love the way they're just shouting at each other, but like they're not in the same area, right? Right? Yeah, so they're like quite a distance away, so they're just <laughs> screaming at the sky? Question mark? I love that. Uh, hell no, you can't. Uh, so I guess they can hear each other because there's no like uh, background noise. Like if they're in different parts of Ikebukuro, they could probably hear each other because there's no, yeah, there's no like, um, background like pollution noise where there usually is in large cities of like um just mundane noises so like maybe <laughs> question mark but it's also just a very sexy image look at him there he's like slapped his foot on the back of the truck and he's like screaming while mika's presumably driving away uh but also very cool yeah uh, oh my god that's so awesome he, he just like shot lightning up like what what exploded there's just a big explosion like i assume this is in the sky he's just shot lightning up to explode in the sky, therefore revealing his location. Good job, you, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, I, I guess this is a challenge, right? He's like, I dare you. He's basically saying, I dare you to come after me, because he probably knows Gurren's not going to stop. He needs you for his plan, so, mm, you know. But oh my god. What a, actually, kind of an intense chapter, I'm not going to lie. Uh, even though I rambled for probably half of this video about things not related to the chapter. But still, very intense. Oh my god, I wonder where it'll go next. Are we going to have a perspective swap finally? Or are we going to stick with whatever's happening here? Because I think there's a good possibility that you and Gurren are going to go ahead and do that fight in the real real time. So they're going to have their big rematch. 
But Mika's going to use that time maybe to go into their memories because they can't really go on a memory journey while Gurren is hunting them down, you know? Like, if they got away, then yeah, they probably could, both of them. But I feel like maybe because you was very much like, oh, Mika, you're the one who's coming up with the plan. Well, I want you to come up with the plan. So it kind of would make sense of Mika to need to go through those memories to find the links to get the plan in order. But you doing the the big... 10,000 push-ups shit in real life where he's, like, doing all the fighting and shit. I think that could make sense. But anyway, we'll go ahead and end it here. This was quite a long video. I, I guess I rambled a lot. But thanks, as always, for watching, guys. I appreciate that people want to listen to my rambles. Thank you very much. And I'll see you later or next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.